We are coming to you live from the studios of the National Dance Theatre Company of Jamaica. And this is the JCDC's dance workshop. Now, in Jamaica, we have various dance companies which explores the Jamaican aesthetic in their choreography. The National Dance Theatre Company of Jamaica is one such company, and they will be putting on a lecture demonstration just to give us an insight into the creative process and how this institution operates. I would like to welcome those persons that are on the Zoom platform and those that are watching us via the YouTube. We also may have individuals on Instagram and Facebook. Whichever multimedia platform you're viewing us from, welcome. Later in the program, we will have the executive director bringing her greetings and welcome. So to have you fully appreciate dance from the perspective of the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission, I have a video that I will show you in a few minutes. Good. This video explores various dance group, whether school or community, studio group, who have been entering the JCDC dance competition over the many years. You will see choreographers who were students and they are now choreographers. You will also see individuals from overseas and they giving their testimonial on how JCDC process would have prepared them for where they're at now. So we go straight to that video and we will break in 15 minutes just to hear from the executive director from the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission. Stay tuned. And welcome to another electrifying episode of Arts Jamboree, the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission's showcase of the arts, as we develop, preserve, and promote the creative talents of Jamaicans. I'm Dion Silvera, and let me tell you no something. Clear out the space in the living room from now, because you're going to want to get up and move your body to this one, yes. Today, we'll be taking a look at the JCDC's dance competition, which provides a stage for rich expressions in several genres, including creative folk, modern contemporary, praise, popular jazz and dance drama. Let's get grooving with a few words from the specialist. Soon come back. <laughs> JCDC as an organization would have started in 1964. It was centered around the time when the country was trying to locate its identity in the context of independence. And what better way to do it than through the arts. So the JCDC provided that platform where community members could showcase who we are as a people from their ethnic understanding. Um, present day, the journey continues because you will have practitioners 
who were teachers, who were participants, they are now engendering that same independent spirit in current performers and current choreographers. So what you're going to see in this presentation, you will see a generation who is currently practicing you will see a generation who would have made a platform for themselves by shaping, forming a company who is still um, producing or showcasing brand Jamaica in their choreographic outlook. I'm a JCDC dance baby. And so it grew in me. Um, I actually started in high school with Vincent Douglas being my first tutor. Further on, I started my hand at dance making with him. When I left high school, I started to work with the Tivoli Dance Group and also went to Edna Manley at that time. And so, you know, I got a full mix of what was out there for me to learn. Then from there, the Tivoli Dance Group um, was birthed from the high school because we had dancers um, who had little sisters and brothers who would come and sit. And so the Tivoli dance troupe being the longest um, standing entrance in the JCDC dance competition grew to be a school and community dance group because at one point we had a 90% of the members of the dance troupe not living in the community, not attending Tivoli High School, but just because of every, I think everybody wants to be a part of a good thing. And We have accomplished um, through the official now 14 of our past members as teachers. As a dancer before, I know I'm a choreographer. The lesson that I've learned before I was a choreographer as a dancer is from the Tivoli Dance Troupe. There's 3D, my dance teacher teaches me discipline, dedication, and determination. With those 3Ds I've put across all throughout my life, and I put it towards my students. Before I prepare for the JCDC competition first, I have to see the type of students I'm getting in. That's one. Two, I have to look back on my competitors. And three, I have to think about my costume, because costume is very important to your dance. With the JCDC for me, for the student, it has given them a wide range of not just in their community, in their community, they go, get to go to different parishes. They get to go and see, to see different students, get to see different culture. I'm based in St. Catherine, and every, every parish has their own culture. So like for instance, St. Thomas and the Western region, wider region, they are different more of the creative folk A, where I'm mostly associated with the creative folk B. So my students get to learn from those, those schools in the different parishes to bring back to their schools. Because remember, we also have Jamaica Day in our school. And in my school, for instance, loves creative folk, as I said before. So when I have to put the creative folk A on them for cultural day, they also learned from other parishes and other schools in the JCDC. So it wasn't for JCDC with the wide range of dance and get to exhibition, exhibit different culture, different folk form and modern contemporary and all the genre. My sweet owner, I've learned so much, not from me, but they have learned for, for the entire time they have been doing, doing the process of the competition. Well, I entered from about 2002. I remember my fascination with dance started just by a glimpse. Um, I think I was meant to see the dance at the time. I was just passing the auditorium, seeing dancers, just performing. And as a young man, I've never really known much about dance. And then I, when I saw them, I was so enthused, I was so caught up with it that I just, from that, I was my love for it just continued growing. The JCDC has brought so many thing, good things for me in terms of dance, because it it has a way to bring out the best in you. Um, there are benefits out of it if you keep on pushing, and then if you 
are, if it's something that you love and you're really want entering the JCDC competition, you should push yourself. Don't, even if you get, you know, some people really like the gold and all, but even if you get a silver, which I've learned so many times, I've gotten so many silver, but it is, it is just a love for it that you have that you keep on going. So no matter what you get, bronze and merit, you keep pushing. Once it as something that you love, you keep going forward to it, going ahead, keep working hard. Any artistic expression, whether it is a music, dance or drama, would be centered around the lived experience. So just as though the music is documenting the history, the dancer is also documenting that history because there is a correlation. This is my motive statement for my dance, Mobak. This is my motif statement for my dance frequency. to the studios of the National Dance Theatre Company of Jamaica. So you were just viewing members of the dance community who would have participated in the JCDC's dance competition, and they were just giving testimonies of the impact of JCDC's process. Now, to welcome us all to this dance workshop, we have the executive director, Mrs. Marjorie Curtin. She will be bringing greetings on behalf of the JCDC and also just to welcome us in our special, sweetie, sorry, you know, sorry. Jamaican way. Thank you so much, Mr. Earl. And you know, on behalf of the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission, our chairman of the board, Ms. Maxine Bisesa, the management and staff, it is more than my delight to be joining you for this special national dance workshop lecture and to extend a special, special welcome to all those who have joined us, all your participants from so wide and far. I hear you have persons joining us on the Zoom, persons joining us on YouTube, persons on the Facebook. So it is my delight to welcome each of your participants to this national dance um, workshop lecture. And I would love to extend, you know, in my style, a very special welcome also to your critically acclaimed presenter for this workshop. I'm so excited when I read, you know, who would be presented at presenting, I said to myself, I really should have been in this dance workshop, dropping legs, lifting arms, moving around. So I uh, special welcome Mr. Marlon Sims, who is an acclaimed artistic director of the National Dance Theatre Company a company I've admired over the years. And I'm hearing that he has some outstanding individuals who have trained him and have carried him to this position. And I want just for all our participants to understand the awesome person 
who will be sharing in this workshop. He was first um, appointed as dance captain by the Honorable Professor Professor, the Honorable Rex Nettleford, and then later on at the retirement of Mr. Barry Moncrief, he was appointed as the artistic director. So Mr. Sims, welcome to our JCDC family. I know you're no stranger and you've taken also many, many um, participants to the competition. So I know you're going to give us the best. Just want to say that um, as we face the new normal, I want all our participants to know that we are preparing to open our competitions and to ensure that you enter in the safest and the most unique way. This year, this competition is going to focus on soloists. I'm excited by that because now it's going to give you your own creative talent and skill that you can showcase. You know, the, the year of the soloists is what I'm calling this performing arts year. And it takes me back to people like Usain Bolt. When you look at a race, it's an individual race. No one can deny who is the winner when you come to the end of that line. And yes, although we'll have adjudicators and um, you know different levels to take you through to the finals of our performing arts competition this year, guess what? The strength of your presentation will be you. So I know this workshop is going to give you information that will enable you to own your skill, own your talent, and present it in the best way. It is my pleasure again to welcome you and then to say, have, take, take the best that you can from this National Dance Lecture because you have the best sharing. I am saying, Hang on to the hands and the feet of Mr. Sims because he's going to take you through a dynamic workshop. Thank you. Thank you, participants, for coming on and joining. And I wish for you all a great workshop. Thank you so much, my executive director. And congrats on your promotion. Thank you so much, Mr. Earl. Dance up a storm yes. for me. Uh, we'll do, we'll do, we'll do, we'll do, we'll do. So, as was stated before, we are live at the studio of the NDTC. And you will be partaking in an history. I'm not sure if you are aware of it, but NDTC is an institution but let me not try to give you that information because Mr. He gave that to you, but I won't tell you something. No, I'm very sure that I have some students from the St. Diego High School. Yes, those Cape students. No, Mr. Sims is from the St. Diego High School. And guess what? While he was at St. Jago High School, he participated in the JCDC dance competition. And guess what? He was awarded the best male solar trophy. And as a result, he got a scholarship to go to Endermann College School of the Visual and Performing Arts mm -hmm. School of Dance. And that started his journey in the dance community. So you are watching, this is your beginning, but you don't know what the end is. So in the background, you will hear some noise, you will see some dancers warming up. That is all a part of the process. You know, Professor used to say that you ought to be psychologically attuned for a performance. And this is a community space, so you will hear them talking to each other so forth and so on. So they will be coming to us at 5.30. So we will continue to show this video about JCDC and its impact in the dance community. Continue to watch. 
And I'm very sure that um, you will want to turn on your video at some point to try out some of the NDTC style. And you may have some questions that they end also. We will answer them. So just write your questions in the chat. Keep your mics muted, good, as we continue this lecture demonstration. Over to you, tech team. Is documenting, is documenting the history, the Dana is also, also documenting that history because there is a correlation. This is my routine statement from my Dana Moe back. This is my motif statement for Of the approach of our teachers, they would have choreographed their dances for the competition in front of the dancers. Now the dancers are learning how to choreograph. They are learning to be disciplined. So oftentimes you would notice that we have returning competitors and they are and returning, returning the form of teaching. Form. They use the dance, and, and now they, they are on program. So, so that is one of my legacies. This, this is, is on the spot, 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 How to choreograph. The competition for us started in about 1984-85 at the Stellamars Prep School. I must tell you that at first the, we didn't get a goal, you know, we got like merit and you know that sort of thing, but it didn't discourage us and after a while we, we consistently entered from about 85, right up until about 1994. We consistently entered and <clears throat> it afforded the, um, the students because they were coming from prep school. They went through that process of entering and then when they entered high school, they still continued. And it was not maybe until maybe there were about six formers so that we started the Stellamars dance on some where we, I think we only entered twice after that. The students learned at an early age performing, how to perform. And they were exposed through the JCDC to a lot of other, other groups. So in scene, the other groups that also assisted them in learning better. As artistic director, when we were looking for male dancers, we would then go to JCDC to, um, to source our dancers. And we brought in maybe about eight or nine of them, um, like Alvin Small, who is still with us now as one of our teachers at the prep school. We have Michelle Bailey, Patrick, Michael, Dwayne, who later formed his own 
com dance company. Um, we also, at Excelsior, we also went to Excelsior and there we had Orville Hall, who is now with dance, who is now the artistic director of dance expression and Shelly Ann um, McCallum. And they were, all, they were all at Stella, you know? And as you, you see one of our classic works, um, Liza was choreographed with Orville Hall as the boyfriend in that piece, yes. I know from Rex Nettleford, I did history of dance with him and I know what it, it means to him. I can tell you that our first concert, Tivoli first concert in 1979 was at the Ward Theatre and we invited him. No, this venture was just a, my idea with the girls. And so he came. And I must tell you, I appreciated him for the fact that it never meant who invited him. It's that he saw the process. He knew what dance meant for this group. And so look for a letter in the morning. He's gonna tell you, I have the letter even to today. It's a part of my treasure. And he said, it's not the beginning. It's a continuity. You can do it. And so I always tell them that this is a part of our mantra to continue the process. Well, my experience coming out of festival taught me a great deal. Um, you had to learn discipline, self-discipline and the discipline of your craft. You had to learn teamwork and commitment, devotion. All of those things were very important. Hard work. There were times when I remember we would have to come outside of the classroom and we would have to be downstairs practicing while everybody's you know, studying or doing classwork. And we had to be able to balance our lives. I think that was one of the very important things that it taught us as, as youngsters, and certainly I have taken that into my adult life, um, that, that there needs to be balance. And when there is passion, it makes the, the labor even sweeter, you know, but um, certainly And now for the moment we all have been waiting for, the National Dance Theatre Company of Jamaica. But before we reveal them to us, I want us in the Zoom community to... gallery for me so I can see the Manchester yes uh, yes good kids palace yes I'm seeing you M Jackson good so remember now I want you to type your name in the chat good type your name in the chat and the parish that you are from no this is a lecture demonstration. You will not get any uh, certificate of participation for this, right? This experience, the aim of this experience is to prepare you to think creatively as you create your solo presentation. So what you're about to see is the style of NDTC, this system of training, you know? Professor would prepare the class and then out of the class would create a choreography with his style, his way of moving. So this is what I want you to experience. At the end of the, the presentation, you will see a solo where the technique or the style is in a performance mode. Good. <laughs> 
So while you're watching, you can try some of the movements. Yes, at the end of the presentation, you can also ask your questions. Good? So we have the musicians to my right. Make some sounds, make some music. Yes, camera, can you show the musicians, please, of the NDTC? Good. So live music is critical to this process. And to my left, probably your right, we have members of the National Dance Theatre Company of Jamaica, headed by the artistic director, Mr. Marlon Sims. Over to you, sir, and bless your heart. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Earl, for having the National Dance Theatre Company be a part of this wonderful workshop to assist JCDC teachers. We're very pleased to welcome you into the home of the National Dance Theatre Company. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today will be one of those experiences where we are gonna share with you what we experience here in our home and what has been in the modus operandi of the NDTC since 1962, when it was founded by Rex Nedford and Eddie Thomas. Now, as you know, the company has different arms. There are about 50 members in the company. So we have dancers, singers, musicians, creative technicians, uh, did I mention the singers, uh, administrators, that comprise the company. So it's a full-fledged family that goes about probably three or four generations back to 1962 when we first started. Now what you will see today is a small composite of the company, of the dancers and the musicians. And I'm gonna introduce them to you. I'm gonna begin first with the musicians. Sometimes they say music comes before dance. Others say dance comes before music. I won't find that one today, but I'll introduce the musicians first. So to my right, veteran, musician, uh, senior drummer, master drummer, part-time lecturer at the Edna Malley College of the Visual Performing Arts, the big man, the big man here in NDTC. The, he is the lifeblood of the music of the company, knows it better than I do, Mr. Henry Miller. Um, and listed next to him is equally talented, equally committed, um, and he has a wonderful story of his mother performing with the company and his father being one of the musicians in the company. So you see, it's a it's a company of family members, Mr. Jesse Golding. So they will be accompanying the class. And their accompaniment goes way back to when Professor Nedford was teaching the class um, before he passed on in 2010. Now, the dancers here with me, let me begin with Mark Finn. Mark, please come forward so everyone knows who you are. Yes, and Mark has already chosen his place at the bar, so he's gonna walk to it. That's Mark Finn. Then we have. <laughs> Jillian Steele. Oh, that's Jillian. Then we have Michael Small. And then we have can, Soleil. And then we have Soleil. All right, so she has abbreviated to her name. It's very short, so you can't forget. So we have Soleil, Jillian, Michael, Mark, Jesse and Henry. All right, so the class really is a system of training in the company that was develop, developed by Rex Netterford, and it took a period of time, quite a long time actually. Um, they say that it takes 10 years to build a technique. Now the NDTC does not have a technique, it has a style, which is a combination of different forms. Within the style, you have the traditional four forms of Jamaica and some aspects of the wider Caribbean. You also have some West African forms that are present within the piece. Um, you also have some elements of the Graham dance technique. You also have some aspects of Horton in there somewhere. And, and of course you have the European influence, which is the classical ballet. Now it's a wonderful culmination of works or an amalgamation of different forms that creates a rich tapestry of movement and rhythm. And of course, the African aspect, the Caribbean aspect, the Jamaican aspect is really strong from the musical component, which informs the rhythm that is explored through movement in the body. And of course, you have the European aspect of it that influences the training, which is the ballet bars. Of course, we do different things with the bars, which you will see eventually. I'm gonna put my mask away so we can begin. Now, because the body is being developed to be strong, to be flexible, to actually sustain particular movement qualities, sharp, percussive, organic, fluid. 
um, because the body has to be strong and it has to endure a, a particular kind of rigor involved in performances, the training itself is very rigorous. And we're gonna start the bar as how Professor Nedford would start the bar class when he would teach a class every Monday at 8 p.m. No matter where he was in the world, he would come to the NDTC studio at 8 p.m. every Monday. Flying from France, driving from the airport. He start right here. So I'm gonna ask the dancers to begin by demonstrating the plie series, which is done with a particular rhythm and sensibility. Oh, I have to speak to the rhythm. Professor Nedford had, was particularly musical in his approach to choreography. And he used vocal intonations to spur the body on to move and respond to this particular rhythm that he envisioned in his imagination. And he got the musicians to articulate that movement quality through the rhythm of the drums, and then the body would follow suit. So I will be kind of giving the sound quality or the sound that Professor Nedford would make in terms of creating the movements for the body rhythm to follow. So here we go. And one, two, and two, two, 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 and one, two, and two.
and one, change back, and two, and two, series which is done in first position second position third fourth and fifth similar position of, of the lower body that you'll see in ballet now the upper part of the body which is the torso has added the spiral effect to it so you see the spiral of the torso from the navel turning the body to the right or left depending on which side of the bar you are on also note the position of the arm it's really it's a classical ballet but what professor Nedford had done was to incorporate the modern aspect of movement with the changing of the back and also the play on the rhythm so you have the organic movement and fluidity of the arms but you also have the sharp change in the movement of the arm when you're in a ground plie we're going to move on to the feet the lower body actually and we're going to do the tondos right and the tondos are really about strengthening the feet and develop, developing that flexibility in the foot right and there is also a syncopation of the movement um, in the lower half i'm going to teach you demonstrate one particular exercise that has to do with the syncopation of the rhythms and also the movement of the body now i love this exercise from day one so it's a pleasure of mine to share it with you all right we're going to do the exercise and bayanka pita five six Seven and turn do and Payanka Pita Payanka Pita Payanka Pita Payanka Pita and Payanka 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 and brush Payamada and brush Payanka and brush Payamada and brush and Payanka Payanka, 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 and hold, 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 and turn. So they can see from behind. Plie and tondu, and Payanka, Pita, and Payamada, Pita, and Payanka, Pita, Payanka, Pita, and Plie, and Plie, and Plie. Plie and plie and a brush. Plie and a brush. Plie and a brush. Plie and a brush. And plie and plie and plie and plie and hold, 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 hold and turn to plie to. So you got the rhythm, the syncopation in the feet, in the legs. You also got the balance at the end. And you also got, you saw a demonstration of the strengthening exercise for the ankles and feet. And at the end of the exercise, they had to balance and hold the movement for four counts. Of course, for greater hold, they had to release the bar for four counts. And it counts because when you get to the center of the stage to do it without the bar, you've already had the training at the bar within the class. Now you have to remember that 
Class is also performance. So when you have class to do, don't take it lightly because the things that you practice in class are the very things that you do on stage. You really can't, you can't go on stage and make adjustments if you have not been practicing all along. So we've been trained as dancers and under Professor Nedford's tutelage that we must perform in class. The class is a performance. And just like how we have all the tech crew on the outside watching the class, normally when Professor comes to teach, he has an audience on the outside too. People come off the street and watch the class. It's sort of an open community approach to sharing the knowledge of the NDTC with the wider community. Now we're gonna do another exercise that has to do with deep lunges, which really helps to strengthen the lower half as well. And it gives this nice long um, lengthening look for the torso when you're on stage. And it comes pretty much out of this exercise. So the legs become stronger, more flexible, more fluid in terms of movement quality. And the torso is elongated. So when you're on stage, even though you may be four feet tall, when you begin to do these movements on stage, you look like Goliath tall, lengthy, and strong. So it's one and two. Yes. And one and two. And two and two. And one and two. And reach. Reach. And one and two, and reach, and reach, and one, and two, and three, and two, and one, and two, and reach, and two, and one, and two, and reach, reach. One and two and reach, reach and one and two and two and two. All right. No, as the artist and director, I had to look very carefully at this particular movement and look to see how this movement could be developed so that we could take what Professor Nedford uh, did in terms of creating the shapes the movement, the rhythm, and the style, and see how much further we can take it. So we've added to this particular movement an arabesque, and the dancers have to exhibit great strength in order to hold the arabesque line, to keep their balance, and then to return to neutral position, which is the lunge in this case. So you're gonna see a development of the exercise that you just saw, where I've come in and I've added something to it, to further challenge the dancers and to deepen the style of the company even further. Seven and eight and four, one and two and two and two and one and two. Tap back, reach and two. Lift the leg. One. musicians good dancers thank you so much i hope you saw the development of that particular exercise where the leg was added to it now we're going to move into the use of the arms and back and torso in terms of the pot de bras and similar similarly where i added something to one of the movements you're going to see an exploration and an addition and development 
of this portobra exercise that Professor Nedipa developed. We're gonna show you the first three as they were originally done by Professor Nedford, and then you're gonna see a fourth as added by Marlon Sims, all right? Now, what I love about these three exercises is that there are changes in the rhythm of the body. There is a displacement of the torso. There is a concentration focus on where the body is in center. And there is the shifting of the torso from this center place where there is a fluid motion in the upper body, but there's stability in the legs being anchored to the floor. And then interesting enough, there is a release in the heel. It's not a releve, it's just a release. And the release in the heel is a pulling together of those abductor muscles in the legs that help to strengthen the legs and also help you develop that core strengthening that you need to stabilize yourself as a dancer, all right? So we're gonna do the first three. I'm gonna pause, introduce you to the fourth, then we do the fourth, all right? Here we go. And one. Three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and lift, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and lift, two, Three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, 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 and recover. Two, eight, two. All right. In the interest of time, we're gonna move on to. One, two, three. Actually, let's do one, two, and two, two, and one, two, three, four. Hey, one, two, and two, two, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, and two, two, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, and two, two, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, and two, two, and one. So we're not going to do the left side or turn to the other side of the bar in the interest of time. But if you notice, each exercise is done four times. And on the fourth one, you hold that last movement for four counts. Now, this particular movement is very interesting to me. It reminds me of a coconut tree. Yes, we're living in the Caribbean. Everybody knows a coconut tree. The trunk of the coconut is pretty stable. It's fixed to the earth. Yes, that for me is the legs anchoring itself to the ground. And then you have the trees which respond to the wind and it sways. And so you have this kind of reflection of the Caribbean landscape where you have the swaying of the upper body reflecting the movement in the trees and the trunk holding legs or reflecting that anchoring position on the floor. Now we're gonna move on to the third photobra exercise as done by Professor Nedford that is done in threes. So there's a change in rhythm, a change in how the torso moves from the center and you're gonna see it now. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, two. Two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Turn two, three, two. Here we go. One, two, three, two, two, three, one. One sharper. One, two, three, sharp, sharp. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Turn two, three, plie, two, three. Thank you very much, musicians. Very strong. Thank you very much. Dance is good. Now we're gonna do the development. I'm gonna ask Jillian to sit this one out. I'm gonna ask uh, Ashley and Michael and Mark to demonstrate this one, right? So this is new, fairly new. 
We've just been in the studio developing and experimenting, looking at what Professor Nedford did and how can our generation add value by adding on to that legacy and that tradition, but still exploring the rhythm and syncopation that Professor Nedford laid down for us as foundation. So let's just revise it before we add the music. Yes, so we have one, two, three, one, two, three, four, contract, five, down, six. Yes, arm come down on, five, down on six. So it's one, two, three, two, two, three, in, two, three, four, contract, down, six. Arm come down on six, yes. One, two, three, four, contract, down on six, correct. All right, we're ready now? All right, that was just a little revision so you can see the process, yes? Ready, ladies and gentlemen, musicians, same one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, two, two, three. In, two, three, four. Contract, down, six. In, one, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, four. Contract, down, six. In, one, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, four. Contract, down, six. In, one, two, three, two. Two, three, one, two, three, four, contract, down, and turn to three. Here we go. Hey, one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, four, contract, down, hey, one, two, three, two, two, three, ah, well, one, two, three, two, two, three, in, two, three, four, well, one, two, three, ha, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, turn two, yay, two, three. The wonderful thing about dance is that you honor tradition, you honor a generation before you, you honor a legacy, you honor a people, you honor a culture. And I feel that whenever our generation comes in to make our contribution, we must honor that through what we do. So we remember our ancestors, we remember those who have given, by those three first movements in the portable that we just did, but we're honoring them by adding on. We say, we see you, we hear you, we acknowledge you, we respect what you've done. Let us build on it so we become stronger. Yes? So all of this that you see in terms of addition is really about expanding and respecting what was there before. We cannot move on without knowing our past. We're gonna move on to another particular portable action, which I <laughs> which have always challenged dancers, because there's complexity in simplicity. But the beauty of it is that it's deceptively simple, but amazingly beautiful at the same time, particularly when it's done with a large group of dancers. And it really, again, involves upper body. There is the fixed position of the hips, moving center, and again, the flexibility in the spine and torso. Yes? Now, we've added to that. We're gonna see the addition shortly. We'll do what Professor Nedford first did. Let me show you the addition. Yes? Please rejoin us. Jillian is back, you guys. Welcome back, Jillian. <laughs> so, one, two, three, yes? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, to the bar. Two, two, three. One, two, three, two, two. One, two, three, two, two. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, two, two, three. Turn two, three, please. One, two, three, two, two. One, two, three, two, two. One, two, three, to the bar. Two, three. One, two, three, hey, front. Two. One, two, three, ah, two, two, three. One, two, three, a hey, two, two. One, two, three, and two, two. One, two, three, and two, two. Turn, two, three, please, yeah, two, three. So that was how it was originally done by Professor Nedford. We're gonna show you what we've done with it and how we've added onto that legacy and shown respect by building on that foundation. So we're gonna go, one, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, quarter turn, two, three. One, two, three, forward, two, three. One, two, three, quarter turn, two, two, three. One, two, three, front, two, two, three. One, two, three, two, turn, two, three, yes. Then one, two, three, other way, turn, two, three, to repeat to the back, yes? All right, 
We have it together now. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, two. Toe in front. One, two, three, two. Quarter turn. One quarter turn. Two, two, three. One to the front. Two, two, three. One, two, three. Two, two, three. One, two, three. Two, two, three. One with a turn. Two, two, three. One. All the way back. Turn. Again. A one, two, three. And two, two, three. One, two, three. Two, two, three. Two, two, three. One quarter turn. Two, two, three. One quarter turn. Two, two, three. One, two, three. Two, two, three. One, two, three. And two. Full turn. One full turn. Ah. A one. All the way. And ta. And ho. All right. No, we have another section, but we're not going to do that one today. Yes? All kind of fabulousness with upper body and back and shoulders and head. But that's for the next time you visit with us. So you have to promise to come back, yes? We welcome you back into our home so you can see the rest of the exercise. Now, there's another ancestor, very, 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 very dear and beloved person that we also remember through dance, who have also helped to build the style and the bodies in the space, not just as dancers, but as individuals. He's probably the kindest person that any one of us here has ever known, yes? And I speak of Barry Moncrief. His class was a phenomenal class. He was a phenomenal teacher. And he was a phenomenal person. You're the H on everything. I just have to exaggerate. He was exceptional in every way possible. Now, one of the exercises I'm going to show you from his class is the stretches that he would have us do at the bar, right? Because we have to warm up the lower half in a different way because we've been working on the torso all along. So I'm going to show you a bit of what Uncle Barry, affectionately called so, Barry Moncrief, past artist director, former artist director taught us. So I'm going to put the leg in second position. Yes? So these are stretches at the bar. Um, we won't have time to kind of go through before we do it. We just have a very short time left, and we have to go across the floor and show you our wonderful progression exercises. All right? So we're going to do our plies, our releves, reach of the arm. Yes? I love for us to actually do um, our tilt today. Yes? We're going to do a tilt just for you. So you can see how the class strengthens the body works on the flexibility, strengthens those muscles, lengthens the body so we can do amazing and incredible um, movements and feats with the body. Yes? Ready? <laughs> All right, so I will talk you through it as we go along. Here we go. We're going to go in fours. One, two, three, four, and two, two, three. Here we go. A one, two, three, four. A two, two, three, four. A one. Two, three, four, and two, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and two, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and two. Now we do the releves four times. Releve, two, three, four, and one, two, three, again. Releve, two, three, four, and one, two. Again, releve, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, releve, two, three, four, and two. The outside arm reaching over, and one, two, three, four, five. Hold for me, hold, 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 and up. Other side. Reaching and reach, 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 and up. Now they're going to slide the leg along the bar to, to develop that extra stretch in the hamstring. And as you can see, the extraordinary lengthening that is given in terms of the body. So in this exercise, the dancers develop the flexibility, the strength, and they're gonna come back center. Now, there's a second element to this stretch that I'm gonna show you today from Uncle Barry's class, right? 
they're gonna be parallel to the bar in terms of having their leg in second position. So the hips will face front or back. So you turn your body to the side, facing front or back, same leg on the bar. And we're gonna move on to the tilt with that, yes? All right, so leg up on the bar in second. Same rhythm musician, thank you so much. All right, same leg, six, that's fine. Seven, I plie, A, one, two, three, four. So it's similar rhythm. The bar is assisting them from a different angle. Plie. So the alignment is important. Placement of the hips. The stretching of the back of the legs. Stretching the back of the legs nice and, nice and long. Putting up from the center, engaging your abdominal muscles. Elevate. One. Stretching to the leg. Stretching to the leg. Back to center. You're going to stretch away from the bar. Back to center. You're going to do this amazing stretch and flat back. Same thing. Here we go. Plie, flat back, plie. Stretch. So we try to keep the leg in turnouts on the bar. Elongating the spine forward. One more time, let's do a plie. A nice deep stretch. Ah, good. Stretch it towards the forward, coming up. We're gonna do a tilt, reaching away from the bar and off the bar with the leg. Then we'll do a promenade. And passe, passe. And plie. And stretch. All right, beautiful dancers. Thank you so very much. All right, that was a dedication to Uncle Barry. I cannot do an NDTC presentation without mentioning Uncle Barry and doing something from Uncle Barry. He was so instrumental in building the bodies and souls of the members of the company while he served. All right, so Professor Nedford class would end with this beautiful movement and relaxation of the spine and what, and what is really a sinuous, a sinuous flow of the back and vertebrae. And you see the ripple that you normally see in the oceans when the waves break, yes? And I particularly love this exercise. And let me tell you, everybody has a different interpretation. All right? And Professor Nedford somehow did not mind because one of the things that Professor Nedford valued was the individual. He saw the individual. We actually have an individual here, uh, several actually, but Mr. Miller is one individual who loves red. Trust me, he's wearing something red today. <laughs> All right, and you must see Mark over there. Yes, Mark wears, wears, is wearing the NDTC pants, but he's also wearing a shirt that says Mark. Professor loved those kinds of things. The individual, the characters that came into the space because he believed that everyone brought their own strengths to the space and that helped to strengthen the company. All right? So we're going to do Wamadam Takayimadam, contract and release. And Yamadam Takayimadam, contract and release. So if you've had a very hard class, because normally everybody's coming from work for company class, this movement tells you that bar work is finished. So everybody gets involved in this one, yes? Even if you're tired, you kill this one because it's the last exercise of the bar, all right? Now you'll see exactly why I say everybody has a different interpretation. You're gonna see some spirits and souls moving now. Ready? Five, six, seven, here we go. Hey, one more down, give my down, contract and release, hey. One more down, take a give my down, contract and release, hey. One more down, take a give my down, and ah. Oh, one more down, take a give my down, contract and con. One more down, take a give my down, contract and release. 
All right, if you notice, that sound I made at the end, the, the, the body is stopped, the dance is stopped. They held the movement and they sustained that, that poised position. Immediately also, the musicians stopped. That was not my doing, that was Professor Nedford. That's exactly how we wanted it and that's exactly how we responded and we retained it 11, 12 years later. All right, now at the end of this, we move the bars away and we do what is our progression. In the progression, we do an amalgamation of things because I did mention at the beginning of the class that we have an amalgamation of forms. So you'll see the West African, yes? You'll see the Jamaican, you'll see the Caribbean, you'll see the modern. Some aspects of what we did at the bar will inform what we do in the progression. So it's really this beautiful fusion of all that Professor explores at the bar and all that he envisioned in terms of his perspective of Caribbean movement and Caribbean people and the way we move and respond to rhythm. I hope you were listening to the rhythms um, that I made earlier. I mentioned verbal utterances, yes, that inform movement. The last one at the bar, this is give the dancers a break while they refresh themselves. The last movement, I'm gonna utter it verbally. I'm gonna ask the musicians to play after I've uttered it verbally. So I went, Womadang, Daka, Womadam, contract and release, and Womadang, Daka, Womadam, contract and release, and Womadam, Daka, Womadam, and ah, Womadam, Daka, Womadam, contract and contract, Womadam, Daka, Womadam, contract and release, eh, Womadam, Daka, Womadam, contract and release, eh, Womadam, Daka, Womadam, and ah, Womadam, Taka, Womadam, contract and ta ta. Hey! Now that has been buried in my soul. Every Monday I would hear that. There's no way I could ever forget it. And so it is my responsibility to pass it on. I'm going to ask you now to listen closely to that verbal utterance, utterance that I've made over the rhythm that the musicians will play. Here we go. Hey! Womadam. Womadam, Womadam, Kaufanka, Womadam, Womadam, Wankang, Kang, Kake, Womadam, Womadam, Wankang, Kang, Kake, Womadam, Womadam, Wankang. All right, thank you very much, musicians. All right, move on now. So while, while we go to the progression, just remember to type your name and the parish that you're okay. from in the chat. Go and type your name and the parish that you're from in the chat. I'm very sure that you are enjoying yourself. It's a lecture demonstration. It is not like the other dance workshop where the teacher looks at you and tells you the movement that you're doing and check you out. This is just for you to view, to learn, to experience so that you can go back to your studios and create. So watch carefully and listen carefully. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Earl. We're gonna do a movement that you'd normally see in the choreography, which shows the ripple movement in the back, the sinuous nature of our spine in terms of its fluid quality of movement and the syncopation of the legs. Now, one thing that West African or African people of African descent recognize in terms of movement is polyrhythm in the body. And you're gonna see the polyrhythm at work in terms of how the dancers move their spine to the rhythm that the musicians will play and how the syncopation in the legs are really, is really quite different from what's happening in the upper body. Diagonals. Let's go. Five, six, seven, eight. One
Yes, we're going to add to show the movement in the spine again. Womadang, womadang, wang kang pang pang pang. Womadang, womadang, wong pang, pang pang. Womadang, wong pang, womadang. Hey, womadang, womadang. Five, six, seven, here we go. Hey, womadang. Hey, forcing, here we go. Hey. All right, so at the bar, you saw the use of the spine and the polar bra and that fluid nature in the spine and the kind of rhythm that takes place in the lower half. There's one particular movement that you'll see in a lot of professors' works that we practice in the bar. We practice in the bar in terms of understanding elements of it, and we apply to this particular exercise going across the floor. Yes, we're gonna go. Oh, ka, ka, ka. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight, eight. Ah, ka, 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 oh. Ka, 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 ah. Oh, ka, 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 ah. Oh, ka, 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 ah, ka. Oh, ka, 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 ka. Oh, ka. All right, no. There's, there's something I want you to, to, to look, pay, pay close attention to because it's a part of the style of the company in terms of how we present ourselves, yes? Professor Nedipal was a very confident, strong, black Caribbean man. He knew who he was. And he ensured that we knew who we were. So what he passed on to us was that black pride, that sense of assertion of who we are. And so embedded in the style was how we presented ourselves as dancers. Professor Nedipal entered the room. I don't mean he opened the door and go in. I mean he entered the room. So whenever we dance on stage, we have that kind of presence that we try to bring to the, to the stage. We want to tell the world who we are. We are a people of excellence. We are smuddy. We deserve to be here. And so we use the movement, the music, the culture, the language, and we bring that to the stage. There must be no mistaking us for anybody else across the world. So even in this movement where we go across and we open the arm and we do that pot of that you see us practicing at the bar, we're opening the chest, we're lifting the chin, and we're presenting ourselves to the world. I want you to look for that because it's an important part of our identity and an important part of the NDTC style. Dancers, let's go. Six, seven, all right so we move on to the west african influence now in this particular step that we do across the floor i'm trying to give you as much as i can in a very short time which means you have to come back for more. Yes? We're going to do the same. One more now. African trip, yes? Five. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Eight. Look at the feet. Look at the grounded nature of the movement. Yes? One more time. Six, seven, eight, hey! Oh. Notice the start between the hips. The relaxed knees, very important. We're gonna add the arms and back. Yes, add in the arms. The fluid motion of the arms. Five, six, seven, eight, hey! Torso, take the torso forward. Hey. 
Yes. Now we're gonna take the torso as far forward as possible. So we're changing the level of the movement. And so you can see the spine. Yes. Five, six, seven, eight, hey, one. All right, beautiful. Five, six, good. Five, six, seven, eight, eight. Up, up, up. Beautiful. One more time. Five, six, seven, eight, eight. Up, up, up. All right. So I mentioned earlier, Uncle Barry. So I have to come back to Uncle Barry now. I have to come back to the people who really gave so much of themselves um, to this process. I'm going to infuse the modern element because he saw us doing the stretches at the bar in second. Do you remember that we were sliding on the bar and then they were doing the tilt? We're going to do some back mods going across the floor because this is how you tr translate what happened at the bar to movement across center and for the center work to become a part of choreography. So we're gonna do our series of back mall movements so you can see exactly what we were working on at, at, the, um, at the bar to apply to movements in space. All right, so bang, ti, ta, pa, 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 ti, pa, pa, ti, pa, 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 pa. Yes, two forward, two second, arms in second. Five, six, Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, second, second, get rare, da, five, six, seven, eight, one, da, 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 two, da, 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 three, da, 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 Ready for the space. Five, six, five, six, seven, eight. Ta 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 ti ta 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 ha ta 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 we ta pa 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 pa. Five, six, seven, eight. Ta 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 ti ta 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 ti ta 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 ta. Beautiful. Now another element that professor would have in the class is the triplets. Yes, we only have five minutes. We we'll do the triplets, and then we're going to end with folk or traditional folk form. We have to return to our roots, so therefore that has to be a part of the presentation. So we're going to go across with a simple triplet exercise, just to give an idea of the class, and then we end with some traditional folk form. We have to. Yes, triplets. One, two, three. Two, two, three. One, two. So we're gonna combine, okay? So come on, come on. One, two, three. Two, two, three. One, two, three. Two, two, three. One. Yes. One, two, three. Two, two, three. A one, two, three. Two, two, three. One turn, turn. Two, turn, turn. One, two, three. Two, two. Three, one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, two, two. We're gonna add the chenilles. Play, play, turn, turn, shilly, shilly, shilly. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, play, two, three. Turn, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, and play, two, three. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three, two, two, three. All right, so I got a little bit of a variation. I don't, I don't mind. Sometimes what they do is what ends up in choreography. We go, we like that. That was nice, keep it. All right, so I like what you just did. So I might just use it somewhere else, eh? So remember what you did. All right, so we get to a little bit of a girl. Yes. We're gonna do some Gary now. Yes. Now the remember the knees are supple. 
yes? The weight is down. And there's a relaxation in the torso and there's a corkscrew movement. The torso moves around on a peripheral axis. Yes? Here we go. Five, six, seven, here we go. <clears throat> Moving across. Notice the bent knees. The relaxed spine moving around in a circular motion. And the step going across. Yes? As you travel. Here we go. Now the arms were held just now. We're going to swing the arms. We do a little dinky mini, so the knees are coming together. Yes? And there's a little brushing motion of the foot to the side. And the arms swing. Five, six, seven, here we go. Eight. Swing. Swing, ta, 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 take it, ta. Mark, mark, swing. Ta, take it, ta. Bring the arm, break. 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 We're gonna do a little dog step on that one, yes? Stay low, keeping the weight of the body into the ground. Yes? Relaxing the hips and relaxing the arms. Six, seven, here we go. Eight. Now you notice everybody has a personal style. So the character of the people are coming out through the movements that they're doing. Everybody's bringing their own flavor to the movement. But the basic step remains, which is touch, touch, and the knees are staying together. Six, seven, here we go. Eight. Now, remember, this is a communal activity. So there's a relationship going on with the persons who are part of that community. So I'm gonna ask the dancers now to relate to each other as they go across the floor in the final minutes of the presentation. Yes, they've already been paired up, all right? And they're gonna give each other energy. They've been going hard, just for you. But they're gonna give each other energy, reaching towards each other and relating as they see each other. So they may come in, they may go out, and there is a play between partners, yes? But remember, we have to maintain our social distance. It's kind of hard to have this genuine reflection of what it truly is in Corona times, eh? So here we go. So social distance play, yes? And relationship. Six, seven, here we go, eh? So look at that relationship between the male and the female. How they relate to each other. Now this is what you normally say, it's a dead yard, yes? And the movement is used to bring joy to the bereaved. Yes, to cheer them up so they feel better about the person who has passed on their loss. Here we go. Five, six, seven, and we eight. eight. Now, through this movement also, there is a defiance about life continuing even in the face of death. And that's, there's a lot of joy in this movement. And wherever it's performed, it brings joy to the community. We're going to bring the dancers together just to cool down. Yes, we're going to keep our social distance to come forward. We'll come Ashley. Yes, Gillian, they've been working hard. The musicians have been working hard. You have to clap them wherever you are. You have to clap them. Amazing work. All right, so this is a cool down exercise, right? Because remember, your heart is now beating fast. We have to bring the heart rate down to a normal level. Yes? So this is just breathing exercises. And breathe. Can I get Naya Bingi? Beautiful. Beautiful. I personally love Naya Bingi. <laughs> I love ending a class with Naya Bingi. Here we go. Breathing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, breathe out. 
No, we're gonna relax the hips. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Breathe out. Breathing in. Breathing out. We're trying to relax the hips, yes? We've been holding the hips in place for some of the exercises. So we have to release the tension in the hip and relax. We're also breathing deep breath to slow the heart rate down. Yes? Last time, breathing in. Take the up, clasp the hands above the head. Bring it down. Bring the legs together. Let's the palms again. Let's relevate, relevate, relevate. Up, up. Shoulders are down and relaxed. Concentrate on breathing. Shoulders are relaxed. Breathing in. Slowly take the heels down. Relax the arms down. Thank the musicians, Mr. Henry Miller, Mr. Jesse Golding. Done. All right, thank you so, so much. Yes, Mr. Earl, thank you. Over to you, sir. Good. So, all of this activity dovetails into a solar presentation of the company from a particular work. Right. The excerpt is from Caves Inn that was choreographed by Professor Nedford in 2002, and that was for our 40th anniversary celebration. Now, it was a work that was done to the music of Jimmy Cliff and Professor Nedford, being an avid lover of everything Caribbean, took a particular kind of love to the music of Jimmy Cliff. And so he had an album. Professor fell in love with the album and created a work on songs from that album. And this was a second tribute that Professor Nedford did to Jimmy Cliff. He did another work called Tribute to Cliff in mm -hmm. 1978. So this was second. And you know, there was something special that happened on that night. We were visited by, the, uh, by um, Jimmy Cliff. He was sitting in the audience and he came on stage after we performed the work. We were all delighted because we didn't know he was watching. Okay. The solo now <laughs> is performed by Arlene Richards, who is Good. a former principal dancer. Fabulous dancer. Good. We await that presentation. I want you to identify the style that you saw at the bar, across the floor, on stage, in costume, lights, camera, action. Good. So watch. I don't, you might have some popcorn or whatever it is. Yeah. Turn down the light in your house and uh, watch this solar presentation. Out of the darkness came forth light. And all life begins in darkness. And we are all moving towards the light. So step with me on this journey of a lifetime. Make 
became the journey of a lifetime. So this year's competition is all about solo performances, good solo performances. So even though in that presentation you saw bodies moving across the stage, um, we could isolate those bodies and you have only a solo performer on stage. Good. Now there is an announcement that Mr. Sims will make at this time. Good. And it is towards the solo performer with the highest score in the school and community category. Um, I'm so very privileged to be asked to do this because these persons are well-deserved in terms of having a, an award named after them based on the quality and nature of their work and the impact of their work. All right, so in terms of the school and community award, it's the Sheila Barnett Trophy for, mo for most outstanding senior school community group. The Bert Rose Trophy for Most Outstanding Intermediate School or Community, and the Barbara Requa Trophy for Most Outstanding Junior School or Community. Now, um, these persons are all founding members of the National Dance Theatre Company who have worked tremendously over the years to contribute to the dance community. Good. Um, the studio group. 
the solo, this, there is a special award yes. in the school and community got category, most outstanding performance. Oh. So we're looking for the best male dancer in the school and community yes. and the best female dancer in the school and community. So even if you're in class three, four, five, or six, if your presentation is the best, meaning that you have the highest score, guess what? You will receive a scholarship from the NDTC. Absolutely. Could you tell us about that, Sir Sims? All right. So the scholarship entails um, the getting training, style development, artistic development, and you begin to train with the National Dance Data Company as a part of our training program. And uh, it's really quite a privilege for us to actually be extending this award to persons who have shown potential and potential for great artistry and professionalism. Now, I have to remind persons out there who are watching who did not know that I also came through JCDC. Good. And JCDC had not been at St. Jago High School, I can tell you, I would not be here today. So it's really quite a privilege to be able to give this to someone in the community who have done extremely well and who shows great potential. An NDTC scholarship just for you is waiting. Good. And I know we're over time, but guess what? I just want you to type in the chat an adjective. Yeah. Yes. Describing this evening's presentation. You know, it was excellent. It was awesome. Just, just, just evaluate this process. Good. And I just want to thank you for tuning in with us. Some persons are asking, will this video be available? Yes, it will be available on the JCDC platform. But guess what? You cannot download it. <laughs> copyright issue if we're going to create a video package out of it that's a different sort of engagement that is more money yes and dance is copyrightable yes so you can go back to the jcdc website and you can watch it you can group your students in the studio physically distance and let them watch let them try out some of the plies some of the pole de bras exercises and Absolutely. some of the dinky minis Yes, and, sir. Yes, sir. And also, too, I'll encourage all our participants in today's workshop to follow us on social media so they can keep up with what's happening on, with NDTC. We are on YouTube. We have a brand new YouTube channel so persons can go on and see works from the company. They can see conversations or listen to conversations of members talking about elements of the company that I know will be relevant to their era. We're also on Instagram. We're also on Facebook. We're on Tumblr, we're on Twitter. <laughs> Everywhere. And we have a brand new website, ndtcjamaica.org, that has a great load of information that will help anyone who is doing research on the company. Good. And we would have started this workshop uh, process from the 16th of March. So you can go back to the JCDC website. Um, we had a workshop on principles of movement, a workshop on dance making one on improvisation now on wednesday we will have another company in jamaica la Catco, a caribbean dance force join us on wednesday the 31st yes wednesday the 31st same time but this time we will we'll be in another location and also on the 16th of april we will have our dance on camera workshop it's a new category Go dance on camera, choreographing the dance for the, for the camera, not the stage. What is that process like? And then now to close everything on the 17th, we have a dance sweat workshop. Good, good. So see you there. Bless your heart. Thank you so much for staying with us. And guess what? Start creating. Start creating. Listen, listen to the ground when your entries will be accepted. So bless your heart. What good? God go with you.